New Delhi, once upon a time, lived a young girl. In her early years, her life was all about school, homework, and chores. Then it was college, assignments, and chores. And then she got a job. And now her life was all about work, deadlines, and chores. Now, most of her days ended with a customary session of chai in the favorite part of her balcony. Her life was fairly simple. It, was, it followed a rhythm of uh, content, fair, and simplicity. Until one day when she met a few of her childhood friends who told her the stories of their lives, of how they lived in faraway lands, living lives and making choices and making decisions with a sense of freedom that this girl did not understand. She listened intently. She contributed little. During this one conversation, this particular exchange, her only contribution was, Ha! Oh, does this really happen? Now this question would change the girl's life forever. The conversation was over after an hour or so, but it wasn't really over in the girl's head. She kept reliving the haw moment over and over again. She began to realize that the balcony that she sat and had her chai in and watched the birds chirp around was beautiful, but it wasn't the life that she had chosen for herself. And then something inside her began to shift. She felt this, this feeling in the back of her head, this strange, strange feeling in the pit of her stomach. And it was this urge, this urge to leave, to leave her balcony, to leave her colony, to leave New Delhi, to leave everything that was familiar or safe. So the girl went to her parents and told them that she wanted to go to Bombay to see her uh, sister. She went to Bombay, she got a job, and she informed her parents that she was not coming back home. Now, the move was considered rebellious by her family, obviously. Not to mention that she, that I, had broken the hearts of my loving and protective parents. I had made a choice. Hi, I am Anchal Dhara. I like to call myself an artist, a multi-passionate artist. I make images, I embroider, I bind books, I write, design, organize, and I am an obsessive cleaner. I do all of this by choice. Now, the move that I made all those years ago may not seem like a big deal right now, but believe me, it wasn't easy back then. You see, I was the first person in my family, male or female, who had left home, not for further studies, but for a, for a career, without any job offer in hand. And my parents were, I mean, they loved me, right? They would have moved mountains to get me to a college of my choice and anywhere in the world. But this concept of leaving without any concrete plan didn't quite exist back then. Every evening, my father would call and ask when I was coming back home. Every evening. Namaste, Papa. Ha, bita, kab aare ho wapas? Namaste, Papa. Ha, to phir main ticket book kar dun, flight ya train jo bhi chahiye, aa chao. Every single day. Until one day. Namaste, Papa. Bita, ap nahi aare na wapas? Thank you for understanding. Now, I don't know if you really understood it back then because I had everything. I had loving parents, I had amazing friends, I had a great job, I had my home, my family there. There was no problem except that there was a problem. I just knew I needed to leave. And I also feel that if I had moved to another city to earn and support my family, I would have been considered a good girl, a supportive daughter, right? But I moved and I made this move out of choice and not out of need. I think I had chosen to be the bad daughter, to be the wrong one in the situation. But what is bad? What is wrong? Why can't things just be? Why can't both of us be right in our own ways? I left home for career and I still love my family. But I want to love myself as much as I love others. Why do I get questioned for choosing myself over the others? Why do I get questioned for any of my choices? I'm sure this sounds familiar to you. 
I'm sure you think about this too. So here's a thought. Our choices are almost always enough to get us by. So today I say let's choose my friends to drop the why. In 2015, on an ordinary, but in hindsight, an unforgettable day, I was on my evening walk. I remember it was raining and I was pondering over something and then I finished my walk and I was like, hey, you know what, let's just walk a little more. I wanted to see how much I could walk that particular evening. And in no time, I finished 15 kilometers. My body responded well, it felt strong, and I was like, okay. I started to wonder, hey, how far would it would I go if I made this into an official attempt? How far would my mind and body support me if I walked a longer distance? Where would I walk to? Now, that was an easy question to answer. So I rushed back home and I told my partner Prashant. I said, hey, I want to walk from Bombay to Goa. He looked at me, looked down, then looked up again and said, ah, okay, when do you want to do it? And then a few months later, I walked from Bombay to your city, Pune, which is lovely, by the way. I love the trees here. And then in less than a year's time, I was on my way to what would become one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. Two feet and a dream. I finally walked from Mumbai to Goa. Uh, and I covered 582 kilometers in 26 days. I met some incredible people. I had, an, had life changing experiences. I met this female Sarpanch of a village. I celebrated Diwali with strangers. And after having no more road left to walk, I actually stopped at Marjim Beach. Prashant all this while was uh, filming my attempt uh, from the support car and then he managed the logistics and also sometimes walked with me and also climbed mountains with me. There we were screaming our guts out after we were halfway done with the walk. Now paying attention to this urge, this feeling had got another life changing event to my life, this experience. So Prashant and I uh, founded the Audacious Project where now we nurture this feeling together. We walk, we cycle, we climb mountains and we plan adventures that take us far, far from our comfort zone and help us understand our real potential and what we're really capable of. A few years later, in 2017, uh, we embarked on our next adventure, 60 Days of Wonder, where Prashant now cycled from Mumbai to Bangkok and <laughs> he covered nearly 6,000 kilometers in 60 days. And um, this, this time I was managing behind the scenes, you know, logistics and filming and everything. Now, the Audacious Project came into being from an organic idea, right? It was just an evening walk that gave us this idea. But while, f while, while doing our projects, we realized that whenever we were sharing our stories with people, it was inspiring them. It was becoming bigger than what we initially thought of it to be. So now we make it a point to document it as much as possible, to document all our projects as much as possible so that we can amplify our message to people and help them transform their dreams as well. I am. Um, I really want to show you all a short film we made for Two Feet and a Dream, and we'll do that now. And this piece of our heart was written and directed by Prashant. So I'm walking down the highway, and this man comes up to me on a motorbike and says, "Madam, do you want some help? Uh, are those guys following you?" I get asked a lot about why I do this and for me it's very simple. If I'm passionate about something, I am going to act on it because it's the only way I can really find out what I'm truly capable of. I can think of so many days where I just wanted to give up but I knew I couldn't. I've had this dream now for so long and I just had to finish it.
best advice I've ever got is something that my physio said to me. He said, take care of your feet and your feet will take care of you. I think that's true of our entire lives. And so I walk. I walk a lot. I have a problem, I go for a walk. I fight with someone, I take a walk. I want to think of an idea, I go for a walk. I walk so much, my feet look ugly now. My toenails are black and falling off. These toenails are the witness to my journey. My ugly feet are the superheroes of my film. Yes, they're not perfect. But there's beauty in being imperfect. There's contentment in being restless contradictory. In these contradictions, I find sanity. The chaos gives me clarity. There's a constant noise in my head. And when I pay heed to it, to the noise, it becomes a voice, my voice. And when my voice speaks, I listen. I listen to the voice and I make a choice. My voice made me leave Delhi but then it gave me a new home. A new home and a lot more. A lot more than the freedom that I was seeking. There was a new me in the making. It gave me a new adventure. It gave me multiple new adventures. And it gave me stories that I could proudly tell. It gave me a sense of self-belief. My voice has given me an expression by reigniting my love for words, which I thought was long dead in me. You see, I've always had short hair. But this one morning, I looked at myself and I wondered, why do we need hair to feel beautiful? What if I didn't, I didn't have hair? Will I still feel confident? Uh, will I have to justify it to others? By the next evening, I was bald. And as I had expected, people made it their business to ask why I shaved my head. They had opinions on my hair and my head. And for the first time, it started to affect me, not my choice, but the consequence of it. I mean, I understand that it's not considered a good omen for women to shave their heads. So the length of my hair or the lack of it started to define my femininity, my freedom to live, my freedom to choose. So I started writing about it. The reaction of people had had such an impact on me that now I wanted to share my reasons with women to make them understand that it is not about shaving your head. It's about taking a step into the unknown, the unacceptable and coming out the other way feeling just fine. I really don't understand why do you need hair to look beautiful. They say you need long hair to look like a woman. वो कहते हैं बाल जरूरी हैं लड़की सा दिखने के लिए वो कहते हैं बाल जरूरी है सुंदर सा लगने के लिए अगर कद लंबा होता तो शायद ये जज भी जाते और रंग गोरा होता तो भी ऐसे ही चल जाते वो कहते हैं कुछ भी पहन लो हर कपड़े में तुम एक सी दिखती हो और बुरा ना मानना पर ज्यादातर तुम एक छोटा लड़का लगती हो वो जब भी मिलते हैं कई सवाल होते हैं पहले वो कोई बीमारी हुई क्या ऐसा पूछते हैं फिर कोई मन्नत मांगी होगी ये सोचते हैं और ज़्यादा खुरेशने का मन किया तो माँ बाप को कुछ हुआ ऐसा पूछ लिया या फिर हंसकर संन्यास ले लिया क्या हंसी को उपसर्ग और प्रत्यय बनाकर उन्हें लगता है उनका ताना मजाक बन गया हंसी को उपसर्ग और प्रत्यय बनाकर उन्हें लगता है उनका ताना मजाक बन गया जरा सी सहानुभूति दिखाकर उन्हें दखल अंदाजी का हक मिल गया क्योंकि बिना कारण बाल काटना उन्हें समझ नहीं आता अपनी मर्जी सा दिखना अपनी मर्जी से जीना उन्हें बिल्कुल नहीं भाता वो कहते हैं बाल जरूरी है क्योंकि ऐसे ही चलता है वो कहते हैं बाल जरूरी हैं क्योंकि ऐसे ही चलता है लड़की का लड़की सा दिखना ही अच्छा लगता है कद की लंबाई पेट की चौड़ाई सुमेल अंग 
खाल का रंग चलने का अंदाज बैठने का ढंग लड़की होने के कई नियम हैं लड़की होने के कई नियम हैं और लंबे बाल उन सब में अहम हैं मेरे बाल की लंबाई से उन्हें मेरे नारीत्व मेरे चरित्र का अनुमान हो गया मेरे बाल की लंबाई से उन्हें मेरे दिल की गहराई का ज्ञान हो गया मेरे अस्तित्व के नियम वो बरसों से बना रहे हैं मेरी हद भी वो मुझे बार बार बता रहे हैं मेरे लिए कायदे और दायरे मेरे लिए कायदे और दायरे लिखने में इतने मशगूल हो गए हैं इंसानियत क्या होती है भूले जा रहे हैं मगर अब अब मैं भी बूझने लगी हूँ उनकी समझ को समझने लगी हूँ उनकी कोशिशों को परखने लगी हूँ उनकी चुनौतियों को कबूलने लगी हूँ अपने विश्वास अपने अंदाज अपने शब्द अपनी आवाज़ अपने फैसले अपने ख्याल अपने कद अपने बाल अपने कण कण के साथ अब मैं बे पर ही उड़ने लगी हूँ अब मैं अब मैं बे पर ही उड़ने लगी हूँ आई रोट दिस पीस ऑलमोस्ट आफ्टर 15 ईयर्स आफ्टर दिस लॉन्ग गैप ऑफ 15 ईयर्स आई आई टू राइट इन स्कूल एंड कॉलेज एंड देन आई थॉट आई रियली डिन एक्सपेक्ट इट टू कम आउट ऑफ मी बट देन आई थिंक एंड नाउ आई बिलीव दैट माई टाइनी वॉइस वॉज लीडिंग मी हियर ऑल दिस वाइल्ड आई हैव इन स्टॉप राइटिंग सेंस With my move to Bombay, my poetry, my walk, the audacious project, and the multiple passions later, I've come to realize my choices, my decision, were never selfish or random. I believe they always were coming from a from an instinct that was unique to me. They have not only shaped my life; they have taught me unforgettable and valuable lessons. They have. taught me about unconditional love they have shown me my boundaries they have helped me discover my true potential and the number of sunrises and sunsets that i i have seen on my journeys is incredible and most importantly i have never been closer to my parents you see i believe that the greatest gift that we all have is this little voice in the back of our heads this tiny feeling in the pits of our stomachs this flick of a switch that can change our lives all we have to do is keep our minds open so that when this tiny voice speaks we can listen we can make a choice thank you so much